Hello everyone, my name is Henry and welcome to another episode of Adobe Add-ons Showcase. Sorry about the delay of this video, I promised last week in my Switch Shoes Showcase that I would be uploading the Colorist review or showcase this week. Or was that last week? I can't even pay attention to it. Uh, I'm sorry, a lot of stuff has been happening and uh, in other news we've also now got Photoshop CC 2017. There's been new Creative Cloud updates. Hope you guys have stayed up to date and paid attention to it. Um, just a little bit of a note, I haven't noticed any. Uh, there's not a lot of extensions that are broken by the update, primarily because Adobe was smart this time around and released the newest C like extension SDKs literally with the last update. So everyone was pretty much ready for this. Or at least any smart extension creator was ready for this. Uh, it should be noted though, the colorist had a new update when I started this video. Um, and apparently, because I couldn't actually find it in the menu, and then I looked it up, and there was a new update that fixed that. Uh, so it truce worked out of the bat, so I guess they already prepared for it with that, I don't know. Um, so one of the coolest things that I kind of want to talk about now that I'm here is the new search feature that they've added to Photoshop, which I just noticed that I haven't... It's not properly scaling, there we go. Uh, which you can either access by just pressing the icon in the top or just pressing Command F, the obvious find. And as you can see there, it actually matters my search. I, I kind of, at first when I saw this, I was like, okay, I run Mac, this kind of does the trick. But then I realized that this is way more featured, should have expected, right? So it allows you to search functions in Photoshop. It allows you to search for help and tutorials and it allows you to search for stock. Now, the search Photoshop is what I find kind of similar to the normal Mac search function. But what I've understood is it's actually a little bit more powerful because it kind of gets the context of what you're looking for. Um, doesn't necessarily need to have it in its name as long as it sort of gets the words. It's pretty genius. Um, and, and what I've learned about it is if I search for Swatch Use, you'll notice it'll recognize the Swatch Use panel. Like literally any extension, so Color Lifter, which I give did a couple of episodes back, again that pops up. It even brings in like um, it even brings in a Google result for that, and then of course today's extension, Colorus, and as you can see, Colorus 2.5 panel. Double click that and it opens because I've already got it here. Um, and then we also got Swatchus here because Swatchus, as I mentioned in the last episode, is kind of connected to Colorus, so you know it makes sense to cover them both. So, Colorist 2.5, or Coolerist, I'm not honestly sure how to pronounce it, is made by the same company who made Swatchus, in other words, Moon Gorilla, the Polish people, who are really awesome people. Uh, now, unlike Swatchus, Coolerist has obviously been out for a lot longer since it's in version 2.5. Um, funnily enough, the original version was both a Flash Professional and Photoshop extension, along with being a native color picker, which I actually do have it installed, uh, just sort of to showcase, so. Um, yes. Yeah, right here, the colorist is right here. Now, I've only got one day left on my trial, I guess I just kind of wanted to showcase it to you guys, but as you can see here, it's essentially the same thing, but this is colorist 1.0, colorist 2.0, never actually got a native color picker, not that it really needed it. So now it's a dedicated Photoshop extension, but just you kind of knew the origins of it. Uh, for those curious, no, it does not support Flash Professional anymore. I do not know why. Maybe that'll return someday. I definitely be using it. I use Animate, which is what it's called now, from time to time. Uh, and it's got some really cool new animation features too now, so pretty cool. So, Colorus, uh, the, it's a color picker for Photoshop, simply put. Now, it's got a couple of advantages over the normal color picker. For one, while Adobe's color picker is iconic and classic, it hasn't changed. Like, if you go back and look at, like, the first version of the color picker, I believe it was limited to RGB. Maybe it also had hex. I don't think it did, though. I think it predated the hex. It was probably only RGB. And then later on, they got SMIC capability, so they added these. And then HSB probably came along. And then more recently, we got Lab. But but in general, it's been the same for ages with no improvements. And in the meantime, a lot of competitors have focused a lot more on color picker because that's the thing. There are a lot of competing products to Photoshop. And I think one of the things that Adobe really doesn't seem to really care about is the color picking aspect because there's a lot 
cooler stuff they want to concentrate on. So a great example is Corel's uh, Photoshop competitor, which I can't remember the name of, which has this color picker, or even Sketchbook, uh, which has um, somewhat similar to this design, just a little bit less featured. Um, the closest thing I can think of to this is the um, color, I wonder, does that still work? It is possible that it's broken with this release. Let's see, Adobe, no, Adobe Color Themes, that's what it reminds me of. Uh, so if we let that open, which takes as well. So this is basically just color, Adobe, like color.adobe.com or used to be called coolair.adobe.com. And you notice, like, this is the closest we'll get to a color picker panel in Photoshop. Um, you know, it it works. Allows you to create color teams and all that. And it's got RGB, SMIC, Lab, H, HSB, and Hex, all the ones Photoshop uses. It's got sliders, and you've got these dots that move corresponding to analogous, monochromatic, triad, complementary, compound, shades, and custom. Um, you'll notice that Colorist has a couple of similar settings. So we've got Mono Sheen, which is you just simply choose one color and then you specify the shade of said color inside the triangle, which can be switched to a triangle or a square. I personally prefer the triangle. Just it, It's more of a design type thing more than anything, but triangle looks better and that is the default. You can also lock it to only be gamut if you ever need that. I rarely use gamut locks on any color pickers, but you know, you never know. And interesting enough, you can actually change it to the um, red, yellow, blue mode instead of RGB or red, green, blue. You can instead have red, yellow, blue, which is essentially the primary colors, not instead of the screen colors that we're so used to. Most of the time, you'll probably find yourself on RGB considering how RGB has been burnt in as a standard. But if you ever need the three lovely primary colors, then I guess using RYB will work just as well. I'm getting stuck on a cord here. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Um, again, you'll notice these two circles, really fancy circles. One is foreground, one is background. Again, just like the normal color picker, you select between them. Um, so the second one is complementary sheen, which obviously just adds a second circle to the other side of the color circle, because this is obviously a color circle, unlike the Photoshop color picker, which is a slider, and then that square in the middle that chooses the shade, and then you just slide along the entire spectrum. Uh, here, we've got that same spectrum, but it's in a circle form, which allows you to do complementary colors. So, you know, because complementary is literally just on the other side of the color circle. So now we get two colors. Then there is triadic sheen, which is essentially the same as the complementary, except you're adding a third color to it. And, and again, this is one of the features of the, there we are, triad, and you get the exact same thing within Adobe Color Themes, so it's kind of similar. We've also got tetradic scheme, which, as it sounds, adds a fourth to it. This is, I believe, Color Themes does not actually have a tetradic. Yeah, we've got complementary, which we talked about a second ago. So yeah, uh, a little bit different, really. Um, and then you notice here we can actually move these two separately, the complementary ones, and then we can move these two. And then if we move either one of these two, it'll just move all three of them, but these two can be changed. Or specifically, yeah, you get the point. Um, and then we've got the analogic scheme, which again was the first scheme here, analogous, that, I can't speak analogous, um, which again is just, in this case, three, which can be moved. So you have to move the middle one to move them. Then you can move these outside of that to a certain, like you can move them halfway away from this one. They can move them around, that's analogous. And then accented analogous scheme, which means it's using accent colors. So you've got like the green one is the primary and then it picks a little bit of a different green on the side and et cetera, whatever. So pretty simple. Again, I've already talked about these. You also have a luminosity lock, which allows you to just lock the luminosity setting here in case you, you know. Then on the bottom here, we've also got a couple of other options for choosing the colors. Uh, right down here, we can, among other things, or not among other things, we can write in hex values, which is really important, especially with how much the web is just keeps on emerging and how HTML and CSS keeps on using hex. Just, you know, it's useful. 
so these sliders allow you to slide. Um, you can see here we've got the mode. You could choose between RGB, HSV, lab, SMIC, or even black and white. Which is just one slider between white to gray to black. Pretty simple. We've got RGB, which is, of course, red, green, and blue. We've got HSV, which, you know, we've got lab. And we've got SMIC, which is, of course, for printing. So, you know, we've got all the different modes that Photoshop already has, and in general, all the modes we really will need. Um, uh, we've also got mixers, which allows you to choose two colors and sort of just mix them together. We've also got this nice color history here, uh, which basically remembers the colors you've picked or sort of chosen, like created before, so that you can pick them again. Now, what's a little bit cool, I think, about... Um, about Colorus is the fact that it has a mixer file. So say you have a team of people and all of them are using Colorus. And then you're like making this company design and you want them all to be using the exact same color. You can simply press this button and then you can save the uh, save it as a coolest of the coolest color color mixer files like that and then save it and it's got the cool name of cool and then you can go ahead and open one of these so i save it to the desktop so i can go and open that and boom so it's got its own file format for these color picked colors so that's pretty cool and to set this off there's also this menu right here where you can go and configure a couple of extra things um so we can do that so we now have it a little bit differently set up you can you can sort of just tweak around your liking, make it look even more to your liking, I guess. Uh, you can also get up some tips and tricks. This boots up at the time you boot it up. You can, I have that off. I do that in most programs that have any tip system. But then again, this is useful if you're new to this extension. You can have this on for like the first week you're using it. Because every time you open the panel, it'll have like a did you know panel open. Pretty cool. Uh, in addition, there's also a about page where you can say hi, and they've also got some nice translation credits and symbols and other things. Pretty cool. Uh, just in general, cool extension, and again, it works really well along with swatches, considering how swatches manages all your swatches. You can use colorists to create your swatches and choose your colors, and then you can keep track of them in swatches. Just in general, an awesome tool, and again, as I mentioned with my swatches episode, it again ties in with the one I did before that. It's been a lot of color stuff the last couple of weeks. It all fits well in with Color Lifter from Dr. Woohoo. So all in all, that's really all I wanted to talk about in today's video. Again, I'm sorry about taking so long on this video. However, I do have a really cool video coming up sometime this weekend on uh, something not really Photoshop related. It's actually more camera and uh, filmography related. So I hope you guys are excited for that. And I may also have another video coming up as well. I want to try doing a lot more content, especially creative content on this channel, not just software related in terms of Photoshop and stuff. And I also will be making more add-on showcases for those who are enjoying those, specifically not just Photoshop extensions. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and thanks to YouTube finally rolling out the brand new annotations, you can now use the annotations on the screen right now without having to worry about being on a phone, because they also now work on a phone. So now you can subscribe, and you can click on all the videos, like the Colorist and Color Lifter review, which is what on screen right now. And it's pretty cool, so you should totally like click on them. And yeah. And also, the link to purchase... Uh, Colorus is in the description. Simply follow the link and you'll be greeted to a nice page where you can find out even more about the extension along with the up-to-date price and of course a purchase link. So with that said, thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe and like the video and if you have any questions feel free to comment down below.